we're trying this vlog thing. I don't know if I'm gonna keep up with it. I don't know if I'm gonna like it, but it's Monday. And I just have a lot of chore-like things to do. I don't want to do any of them because Afterlight is teasing Bergman Brothers Special Edition and I am about to die of excitement. So I'm gonna try to be pr productive today. I'm gonna put on an audiobook, I think. Maybe not now, but in a bit. Um, I'm gonna start, what's it called? I think it's called Girls With Bad Reputations. And yeah, I'm gonna see how much work I can get done. and this is from a concert it is like massive it's like either an extra large or an extra extra large because that's all the size they had left and hat I think it's from urban but fit check now before i do a little cleaning i think i'm gonna do some makeup because i have content i want to film today and if i don't do makeup now i'm just gonna lose all motivation and not do makeup at all. And while I do it, I think I'm gonna give like a reading update. So reading update. Yesterday I started reading Pride and Protest by Nikki Payne. It's a Pride Prejudice retelling. And I am enjoying it quite a bit so far. I like that it's dual POV, you know, getting to see Darcy or in this case Dorsey's perspective um and it's a lot of fun my thing with pride and prejudice retellings or pride and prejudice itself i just want to shake the two main characters and be like oh my god just talk to each other like normal human beings but obviously then you wouldn't have the great hate to love story that you have he's the ceo of a company that's um i don't know what the company does but it's called pemberley and they want to i guess develop the apartment building where her family lives she's obviously against that and against gentrification and so she is very much um vocal about it I'm about 100 pages into that one and last night i also stayed up until 3 a.m <laughs> finishing the catch by amy lee which also comes out on the 13th um uh, that was just absolutely adorable even if it wasn't super cute which it was it was really cute but even if it wasn't it'd be getting a lot of stars from me because it is a mashup of while you are sleeping and the proposal which while you're sleeping is one of my all-time favorite movies like ever like i can quote that movie front to back but that one's very cute that's the third and final book in her in amy lee's um influencer series which i really enjoyed um i think x's and o's is still my favorite but the catch is a very 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 close second the catch is about melanie and if you've read the other influencer books you know you get introduced to her she's friends with crystal and tara tara and she is like a lifestyle influencer where crystal is a fitness influencer and Tara is a bookstagrammer. She gets an offer from a resort in Nova Scotia to stay for a week and, you know, film content just to promote the location and all it has to offer. But when she gets to Nova Scotia, she real she finds out that they booked her on the wrong date, so she is a week early. And instead of flying back to Boston, she finds an Airbnb an hour-ish outside of Halifax. Um, but when she gets there, and it doesn't really look like it was advertised, it's kind of falling apart. And there is this grumpy man who does not like her very much, does not want her to be booked there. 
but his business partner ends up, you know, convincing him, forcing him to let her stay, and one thing leads to another, and he is taking her on a whale watching trip when he gets knocked overboard, and thus ensues the while you're sleeping element because she doesn't want him to be alone when he wakes up in the hospital so she tells everyone that she is his fiance and his family comes running in and he wakes up and he finds out what scheme she is you know created and um his business partner who's also his cousin she kind of convinces him like hey our family's not fighting for once we should just keep this ruse going and so it's really very much a mashup of while you're sleeping and the proposal because they do not like each other at all and so you've got that um dynamic but also she, he's got this eccentric family which she you know doesn't have she doesn't she hasn't experienced in quite a while so she ends up falling in love with his family as well as him and i thought it was really cute very, very weird i've never really filmed the process it takes for me to get ready still can't get over the bergman brothers or i mean by the time this video goes up it'll be confirmed that it's Bergman Brothers. I know. I know a Bergman Brother when I see a Bergman Brother. What really gets me is that I was just talking about in one of my videos how I would really like Bergman Brothers to have a special edition. I talked about Veronica's Beetle too, but that one's more of like a pipe dream. Because <laughs> I feel like that series is not as popular as some of the other ones, and mystery series don't really get special editions, which is a travesty, but well. Um... But I was just talking about how I wanted the Bergen Brothers to get a special edition. And now they are. And I am... I am stressed. This is like... This is like my heiress tour. I will fight. And I hope it works out better for me than for some people when they have to deal with Ticketmaster. But I'll be waking up with the pre-sale. I'll be setting like 10 different alarms, 10 different reminders. Because with Well Met, I missed the pre-sale. I completely forgot about it. And I was like devastated, I was like, fuck. But I ended up getting it with the regular sale and it was fine. But oh my gosh, I would've been so sad. I mean, at the end of the day, it's like special edition. If you don't get it, you don't get it. Like, but I don't know. I love the Bourbon Brothers series so much that it would, you know, be so exciting. And it would be an absolute dream to have that series as special editions. I am starting to get a headache and I think it's because I'm hungry. lunch has been consumed my coffee has been acquired and it's time to clean uh, but i'm going to put on an audiobook i'm going to switch from music to audiobook and we're going to try to get as much done we're going to try to make my room more pleasant to be in
Okay, so I'm kind of working on organizing my room right now. And it just occurs to me, I don't know. I'm probably crazy for doing this, right? But what I'm asking, what my question is, do you have like a piece of jewelry that is like your emotional support? piece of jewelry or like an article of clothing or like whenever you're stressed or nervous you wear that particular piece of jewelry just for like the comfort value of it because I do I have my anxiety necklace is what I call it it's this this little it's a little tinkerbell necklace I got this from Disney World I don't know years ago and I wear this all the time <laughs> in college I wore it like every single day and <laughs> Um, there was one day when I was looking for it and I thought a lot, I could not find it for the life of me. I could not find it. And I was just losing my mind. I was so upset because, you know, when you lose your anxiety necklace, like it feels like an omen. I did end up finding it, uh, which I was very glad about because when I went to Disney World, I did not see it, um, where we got it. So I was very, very thankful that I found it. But when I went to Disneyland for my birthday last year, I did see it. They actually had it. So now I have a second one. I have two of these necklaces. So now if I ever lose this one, I have a backup. And oh my god, you can tell how much newer this one is. This is not book related at all, but who cares? You can tell how much newer this one is than this one. But every time I see the new necklace just sitting on my um, jewelry box, I kind of laugh because I... <laughs> I'm so attached to my anxiety, emotional support necklace that I had to get myself a backup. Oh, and also here's a new contender for emotional support necklace. This was a Christmas gift. It's a little Pandora charm of an upside down Spider-Man. Since I'm here, I'll do a reading update. I'm about 6% into Girls With Bad Reputations because I listen at like 2x speed because for whatever reason that helps me keep my attention span you know and I think it's gonna be really good you know when you start a book and you just know that it's gonna be possibly five stars or just it's gonna be a really good read I'm feeling good about this especially coming off well not too recently but semi-recently coming off of the breakup tour which I did not enjoy I wish I did but I just didn't it's kind of nice to be starting a book that not necessarily in the same vein, but it's, you know, a woman who's in a band, I assume, falling in love while on tour. It just has so much more potential already than the breakup tour did. So I'm enjoying it so far, which I'm happy about. progress is so satisfying okay we are done with cleaning for the day finally we had a cookie break and now i am going to do some content maybe i have some pictures i need to take and yeah editing reviews that i'm depressingly behind on and editing a video for the channel i'm going to switch from girls with bad reputation to music to try and wake myself up but i'm really enjoying it it's so good it's so i think it's gonna be five stars i don't know it's just, I love the characters. I think they deserve the world. And I really like the narration too. So, highly recommend. Even though I'm only about 30% in, I still highly recommend.
so fucking tired. I have my tea. I won't spill my tea. I have my book. I have my Kindle. And now I'm going to read. I'm very tired. So I don't know if I'm going to film myself reading this time. I filmed myself enough for one day. But I will film my reading buddy. And I'm going to be honest. I don't know who's more tired, me or him. Okay, so I'm switching over to my Kindle book now. Um, I read about a hundred pages of this. Granted, I haven't read many Pride and Prejudice retellings, but I feel like this is the best one I've read so far. Or maybe it's just because I've read Pride and Prejudice now. I don't know. I This feels like the best retelling that I've read. It truly feels like Pride and Prejudice. Like you can, you know, recognize who all the characters are. You can recognize the various plot threads from Pride and Prejudice. I'm almost halfway through it and it's good. I like it. But I will say like it is a little slower paced than most romance books that I've read. So that's the only, not downside, but it just feels a little slower paced. Final reading update. I started The Shadow Water, which comes out tomorrow. I know. I'm behind on arcs. Please don't come at me about it. Oh god, I look so tired. I look dead. I read about 30% of it. And oh my god, it's so cute. Why is it so cute? I love it. I love the little, like, grumpy sunshine hermit and like, you know, city girl dynamic. And obviously a little mystery, but it's just, it's so cute. I don't know why, I, I, I don't think I expected it to be this cute. Fit check. <laughs> Purse, I have a coach, but it might be too warm for it. The plan for today is Cute Cafe Bookstore. Let's go. books you're looking for? I don't think so. No. Think no. No. <laughs> no. You have too many books? See, because you have books. Karina has knitting. And I have like sewing stuff, books, and knitting. So I do not <laughs> need to keep up with everybody's <laughs> What? You totally can. Yes, you because, can. Because yes, you can. Yes, you can. And I also came home to a very exciting book mail. So I'll show you the books I got first, and then we're gonna do an unboxing. So <laughs> I got way too many books. I'll start with the ones I went in intending to get. And the first one is Heartless by Marissa Meyer, which I got this because there's actually going to be an event at my bookstore. 
with Marissa Meyer, which is like a first. Like my bookstore never has events. So I'll be going to that this weekend and I haven't read Heartless yet. So I thought I'm gonna get Heartless. But then I didn't realize that Marissa Meyer's new book, which is what this event is for, came out today. So obviously I got that That's with a little luck. But then what I also didn't realize with a little luck is the second in a series they're standalones but it's still the second in a series so I also got instant karma so I went to this bookstore planning to only get one Marissa Meyer book and I came out with three and I'm also in a bit of, of a dilemma because I don't know which one I want to read first like do I stick with Heartless because that's what I felt like reading this week? Or do I start this series because this is what the event's for? I'm having a crisis. Okay, and the other book I went in looking for was because I kind of feel like reading a romantic suspense. So naturally, instead of reading the romantic suspense that I have on my shelves, I thought I'd get one entirely new, and that is Secrets and Lies. Okay, and then I got The Catch, because I really loved the catch reading the advanced copy. So naturally I got the catch. And then two other books that came out today, I got Ready or Not and Hand of Tape Beyond Repair, both of which I've heard really good things about. And then I also got These Deadly Prophecies, which I've also heard good things about. And that sounds good. And it's like kind of like a little fantasy mystery. So I truly did not mean to get that many books. It just happened. Okay, now the real excitement. I'm very excited. I'm so excited. I got an email asking, would you like to be put on the list to get an advanced copy of this book? Physical advanced copy. I have I have received like I think just this month I have received a physical dish advanced copy, but I've never been contacted by publisher being like, do you want to receive an advanced copy of this book and by like you know relatively popular writing duo oh my gosh <gasps> look at it oh this is so cool okay the pleasure of your company is requested at the heist of the season the 4th of june 2024 at the estate of dashiell owens rhode island dress code white tie deception to follow how cool is that look at it ah. official member of the unofficial chess club oh my gosh okay what's this i don't know what this is <gasps> it's a little cake <gasps> look Look at that, that is an official advanced copy right there. Oh, that's so cool. I am losing my mind. The inheritance games meet Ocean Eleven in this thrilling YA adventure. Okay, so thank you to, you know, the publisher and everyone who sent that to me. I am very excited, very excited. It's one o'clock still in my pajamas on Valentine's Day. I'm thriving. <laughs> I am uploading my video for this week. I got it done. Not as, I don't know, fine-tuned as I normally would, but I just couldn't be bothered. Now I'm gonna try to get dressed because I had a really cute outfit planned for the day. And then I was sabotaged by my body uh, but I'm gonna try to fight past it I don't think I'm gonna get much done today though I'm gonna finish fish out of water and maybe play like the sims because that's about all I have the bandwidth for outfit so far. Very bright, very Valentine's-y. And it's so gloomy today. So this day is just not cooperating on many levels. I don't know about you, but I really hate adding text to my reels because I feel like I can never 
get it to look nice. I don't know where to put the text for this, where it won't look like garbage. Okay, so in last week's video, I put a message out into the universe. I asked Orbit, I asked the lovely Megan Bannon, if I could have an advanced copy for the undermining of Twyla and Frank. And to promo the video, I also put that clip on my Instagram. And Megan reached out and she said she had an arc and she's going to send it to me. This is a, that's the first time I've ever like tried to shoot my shot for an advance copy. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm so excited. But now I'm going to finish Fish Out of Water because I've been meaning to do that all day and I'm only just getting to it now. But oh my gosh, that's crazy. That's crazy. still going strong with the pink cute cute see because you've got the red lining and then red heart pink pants adidas with beads oh that hurt is still there. So I was going to spend the day reading. Instead, I went to Michael's with my mom. I didn't have anything I needed from Michael's and yet I still got way too much stuff. So I'm going to show you the stuff I got. Uh, first of all, from their Easter collection. Look at her! <gasps> Isn't she cute? And then I also got Oh, aren't they so cute? I also got this. This is just like trim bundles because I'm sure you've seen like the little, I think it's called Coquette, all those bow trends. I have one in my hair right now. I thought this would be just perfect. It's the perfect length to just have and tie into my hair. But next, this. This made me think of Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams, so naturally I had to get it. This, which is like a vase, but it's rain boots. I ha I'm aware I have an issue, but they were cute and I want to put them on my shelf and look at them. Oh, they're gorgeous. I'm going to make these into a bouquet. And then another little jar to put flowers in. obsessed with how these turned out. Um, a lot of these came from different bouquets that I just kind of cut up and put together. So there's this one. This one. I love how these two turned out. I think they look so pretty. I don't know. Do you think I have a future as a florist? Should I follow Annie's life path? The question now is where do I put these? I mean, this one already has a spot in my room. So we'll start with that one, but I don't know where I'm gonna place the other two. I also didn't realize how nice this one would look because there's so many like blue books next to it. Looks so good. Book 
mail. Oh my goodness. First, I have Foxglove, their January book. Don't want you like a best friend. I love their dust jackets because this is just a dust jacket that goes over the paperback. I love their dust jackets. They're so freaking gorgeous. But, but, oh my God. And she, lovely, wonderful, delightful human that she is. She signed it. She signed it. <gasps> oh my gosh. And I got, I got my own little key. I kind of want to make a necklace out of this. And she sent me a card. She sent me a card. Thank you for wanting to read The Undermining of Twilight and Frank. I hope you enjoy it. And may it look great on your wagon wheel coffee table. Sincerely, Baby Fish Mouth. <laughs> this is, this is peak. This is peak. I will never get over this. Oh my gosh. And when I abandon everything to read this right now, then what? Then what? I really just came in here to get a picture of this, which I'm still not over the fact that I have this book in my hands. This book doesn't come out until July and I have it in my hands. I'm not over this. I don't think I'm ever going to be over this. I think this is going to be one of my most prized possessions for the rest of my life. I figured I need to do a reading update since there hasn't been much reading in this reading vlog. But since I'm going to the Marissa Meyer event tomorrow, I started Instant Karma, which is the first in the Fortuna Beach series, which the second book is what the event is celebrating. Um, and this is very cute so far. I'm definitely glad I've gotten to the point where the main character is realizing how wrong she's been about life about certain other characters because there's an arc that needs to happen when you're reading a book particularly a YA book the character main character at the beginning you might not like them very much because they're gonna be stubborn they're gonna be naive they're gonna be a lot of things and they need to go in the arc to kind of um grow beyond that and so I'm glad I've finally started reaching the point where she is um kind of just discovering things about life and things about the people around her, particularly the love interest that she had initially made assumptions about, assumptions that were very wrong. So I'm enjoying it. I'm like 40% of the way into it. But my only issue is like, why is the text so small? Who approved this? Why is, why is the text so small? That's my only issue with this so far. Sunday and I am ready for the Marissa Meyer event. I've got my, it's not for the Lunar Chronicles, but I've got my space buns. I've got my Ramping Crew t-shirt. I've got boots because it's cold and rainy. I have my jacket, which I'm not putting on yet. And I just have this tote for my books that will be signed. Let's go. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Ow! Well, <laughs> contemporary, but with a touch of magic. And then at one point had the idea of, well, what if we messed around with luck and gave someone really just ridiculous good, can only be magical luck. And then what happens when the luck inevitably turns on him? I 
love romantic tropes. Uh, and I know there was through a period, um, I don't know, maybe we're still going through it, where people were like starting to turn against the tropes, because um, I think maybe authors were just like talking about it so much that readers were like, we get it. Um, but there's a reason that these tropes are so popular. Like there's a reason that we love hearing these kind of um, same archetypal stories over and over in these same moments just like get to us. First, would I be willing to explore different genres? Absolutely. I have lots of other genres um, that I would like to try. Um, namely, like I have ideas for a murder mystery right now. Um, and I also would love to someday do like a heist novel. I love heist themed things. Uh, the difference between writing fantasy versus contemporary and do I have a preference? Um, I don't really have a preference. Uh, I enjoy both of them for different reasons. I like kind of being able to bounce back and forth um, between them. And for me, writing the contemporaries um, kind of feel like palate cleansers in a way. Like it's, I just want to like go into a world where things are a little bit simpler and a little bit happier. I just realized I should probably do an outro for this video. So this is where you get to have it. So I am back from the Marissa Meyer event. We also got dinner after, but I am back from that event, which was super fun. I hope my bookstore keeps up that tradition of doing events. My hair is a little crazy because I took the space buns out. And now I'm just gonna go start a new book. I got Chloe Lisa's newest, I saw it. It was out at the bookstore, so I got that. I think I'm gonna start that next. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe to my channel, especially with a vlog because I really don't know how to vlog. And so if you like this, especially leave a like. And I will see you in the next video. The next one's gonna be a fun one. I'm excited.